like that. Okay. See, Janet, I, I'm trained. <laughs> okay. Um, and now I'll, I'm going to start sharing my screen and we'll start with looking at some of the artwork. We got a lot of nice pieces this month, I'll tell you. Very, very pleased. <laughs> Everybody see that one? Let's see, double click. I see oh, some of mine at the very beginning. All right, you know what you're seeing, then you're seeing the wrong thing now. Okay. You're seeing all of them. And other people's. I see them. everything. I see right. you. <laughs> this is the part that I absolutely don't like. Um, let me go in and do this again. So I have to do this first, and then I have to do this first. And now I can share my screen. I may have to go answer the door when my the lady who's shopping for me shows up. No worries, okay. you're you're up front today, Mary. Okay, but she could show up any minute. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I, I have that piece. one uh, because that one was done to a class assignment where we had uh, six pieces of paper, and we took a crayon, pencil, whatever, and drew lines mm. across. And then she said, separate them and put them in different order. And I think these were the orders. And then she said, paint them. Mm -hmm. and I was kind of surprised this creature emerged. Yeah. Uh, kind yeah. Of gave him a shiny eye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm curious what people think of it because it wasn't my normal way of painting. And, and I, I, I'm familiar with the exercise because I was in that class. Yes. And um, I think it came out really nice, Mary. I struggled with it because, you know, I did the exercise and I did it a little differently. I, I drew the lines through the six different, you know, pieces of paper and then I transferred one of them to a, like a, a canvas. I think I used the oh. cradle. And I, tr I traced, the, I copied the lining right. But then as I started painting, I found it like, oh, wait a minute, I don't really want a line here because I really want to do this instead. Yeah. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, I, I forget what I used to make the lines, but they were hard to get rid of. Mm. So That's it was sharpie. kind of a weird experience. But yours came out good, I thought. That looks good. Yeah, I like the colors. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, whimsical. <laughs> it is, yeah. of course. Put it of in course. the children's book. <laughs> You know, it'll be interesting, Mary, if you took them now and you flipped them around and did something different with them. Yeah. Well, I glued it down. It's oh, you did? Okay. To a okay. piece of foam core now. Uh, it's okay. done. I'm not going to do anything else to it. All right. I know. Light, so, sometimes more. those exercises are too much. It's like, all right, let's move no. on. <laughs> As I'm a collage artist, I'd be tempted to put some black yarn around the outlines. <laughs> yeah, Mary, Marilyn, that's a good point. <laughs> the I, eye is very eye-like. Hmm? The eye is very eye-like. Yes. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> I did do that. I wanted it to look like an eye. Yes, mm -hmm. very alive looking. <laughs> yeah. So it's a lot, there's a lot of movement in it. I really, I really yeah. like it. Yeah, it's like a like a whimsical sea creature of some kind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, sea creature for sure. Yeah. Very much so. Did Maybe you say a, a whimsical sea creature. Whimsical. A whimsical. It could yeah. be mythical too. A turtle that's swimming a little bit. <laughs> okay. I could call it sea creature. Yes. Oh, yes. That'd be a good title. Okay, I think I have two others. Uh, yep. Yeah. This one, I want to know if it looks finished, if you think it needs more work. It's 16 by 20. And it has some watercolor, and maybe it's all watercolor. I so, can't remember now. My and first reaction is this light, so I don't know whether I need to darken. Part yeah, of it. my first reaction is it looks too flat. It looks too like the values are all very similar. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would probably start by you know maybe darkening those black lines, the black okay. you know, those, and see where that takes you. What's the subject that you're imparting there? Hmm. It's been a while. Uh, I think it 
kind of look like buildings and then you're looking through windows. Mm -hmm. at ocean. Like the ocean or something. Yeah, ocean. You're looking through rather large windows and you're seeing the buildings even through the windows. So everything is through a bunch of windows. Hey, Mary, Mary just an, as an idea, because you're going to continue to work on this, this kind of reminds me of Devoncorn. Oh. But if you fun. take out, what I would do is those areas where you actually have realistic objects like the boats and, and the, uh, the bridge, mm -hmm. I'd probably cover them with some kind of a color that would indicate that. Like, in other words, if you're looking out at a bridge over the ocean, maybe you just want to use splashes of water and maybe some sand color. In other words, abstract it more. Just, just an idea. I'm not totally sure I follow the idea, but I'll think. I'm just, I guess I'm suggesting remove anything that's representational. Oh, you I know. don't. Oh no, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I would. I would darken the outlines. Oh yeah, we'll definitely do that for sure. Yeah, you need more contrast in the values. Yeah, oh. for sure. Contrast and value. Okay. If you could be a little more painterly in the open spaces. Mm hmm. Good point. Okay. More painterly. I like the, I, I kind of like the fogginess of it. The fogginess? Yes. Of the, uh, I know what you mean. It's got that, it's got that. The bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you like the fogginess in all of them or just the bottom one? Well, I, I think all of them because, okay. um, um, you're not, it's not clear that you're looking through something, but if you darken those things, the dark, you know, darken the, mm -hmm. um, the mm -hmm. outlines, uh, or the windows, the window panes, whatever they are, if you darken that, even outline them in black, um, I think, I think the fact, I think everything else would recede even more, and it's like a foggy scene. It's, it's okay. I kind of like it. It sounds yeah, like a good that's idea. That's a good point, Kate. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a try, dar the darkening part, and see what happens. I think yeah. that's a good that's a good move, Mary. Just just darken the lines and see where that takes okay. you. Okay. Good. And when you mean darken, you mean fill them in dark, or just the yes. Like uh, I would start by outlining each one with black, and then and then and then fill it in if it, and that might be all you need, so that there's sort of a. Um, so there, each one of those window panes are shaded a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I think I have one more. Yes, you do. Which I mainly want to know, does it look done? <laughs> I, think I think it does. does. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I yeah. like it. Uh -huh. Yeah. It reminds me of a <clears throat> graffiti wall or something. <laughs> Yeah, this is the kind of thing that if you go any further, you may overdo it. Okay. Yeah. I think it was done. Yeah. I just it, it, to... it reminds me of somehow a subway. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> if you were in a, in, in a subway and they have the walls colored. You know, yep. It almost looks like a subway map. map. Yeah. It does, yeah. Yep, very much so. Mm -hmm. Good title, Mary, just subway. Subway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's it. That's mm -hmm. all you've got. Good, good stuff, Mary. Thank yeah. you. Ooh, uh, oh, like exciting. That. Who's that? Now, let's see who this is. I have to look at my chart. This is one of Barbara's. Okay. I was just at Sullivan Goss, and some of the paintings reminded me a little of this piece. It's kind of you know, Sullivan Goss in Santa Barbara, it's a uh, nice art gallery. Is Barbara Schwartz on? Yes, I am, honey. Oh, yeah. there you are. Okay. Because I, <laughs> I have my phone, my iPad, and my computer are down. It's, okay. It's kind of appealing to me. <laughs> Maybe yes, because <laughs> it reminds me of some of their, they're selling a lot of cr local people as small Christmas art. And I could visualize that hanging in Sullivan Goss. Nice. It's a narrative, you and know, it's telling a story. We don't know what the story is, but I think it's intriguing. And it's so, you know, the colors 
really go well together, the abstract part and mm -hmm. then the figures. And it's I like that it's just this uh, narrative view of something. <laughs> Thank you. It is a narrative. That's great because it could be a narrative of lots of things. Sure. Escape. I just put liberation. Like, <laughs> hmm. well, she pushed escape on her computer and she didn't go anywhere. I mean, it's very cute. I think it's yeah. really pretty. Good the the way this, the, yeah, the way this line full goes into the distance, right into here, that really gives it some yeah. wonderment. Yeah. Like, what, what's going on here? Yeah. I'm not sure about the title because to me, <laughs> it looks almost a little scary. So I'm not yeah. sure liberation. Well, would... you know, it's like people coming out of, for example, a concentration camp or people escaping yeah. somewhere. Oh, okay. Good. People escaping. You know, you have to use your imagination. I'd love, the, I'd love escaping instead of liberation for the title. Oh, okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Or, or protesting. Okay. I like the composition. The composition is very unique. I really like it. It is. The composition works real well. And I yeah. just love the colors. The colors look great. Yeah. Yeah. The contrast between the empty, well, not empty space, but the more or less empty space with the figures is a beautiful balance. Yeah. Yes. Thank yeah. you. That's what I was trying to do composition wise, but I like the word narrative and I like, you know, I like that's good. It, I, you know, it's part collage, part, you know, painting. It's part a lot of things. Uh huh. You can see. You oh, know. Wait, what's the collage <laughs> part? Yeah. I don't see the collage. Yeah. Well, it, I put some papers over each, not not where the um, bodies are walking. In this area here. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Very little, you know, but just. I was enough. gonna say it's very subtle. Yeah, very subtle. Well, no, it's cleverly you. done. You nice. guys made a day. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And here's another one. Oh, no, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah that's, yeah. that's after they got there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are those flowers? Is that flowers? No, no. They're people. They're people. Oh, they look like people. These are people also? Yeah, they're just like there's yep. a lot. Oh. I can see the images of the people, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah definitely. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Could be flowers, but the cloud I they're, they're trying to get someplace. They're walking in line. You can see that back and forth, back and forth. Well, they escaped from where they were, and now they're in the place they escaped to. Very good. I see you. Yeah. <laughs> You're they're in the escape. City, if you can see. But um, this seems very regimented, though. The, the, the figures seem to be very tight. They look like flowers to me. <laughs> no, they could be. Yeah. I'm sorry, because it makes me think of Persephone, some of the Greek goddesses when they stepped on the ground and they mm -hmm. flowered through. What do you think of that, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Greek goddesses. I'm not. I'm not up on Greek goddesses right now. <laughs> That's not no, my forte. Know, Circe, <laughs> goddess of wheat and and production, and you know everything mm -hmm. that grows. Her daughter Persephone, who got raped by Hades and taken down to Hades. Well, everywhere she stepped, flowers grew. <laughs> it reminds me of a production line, but that's only because my it's my background. <laughs> well, you see, it, that's what's good about an abstract. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. It's People also, walk away. I've been doing it my whole life. They walk away, well, let me think. If yeah. you get a chance, go to that Sullivan Goss exhibit because it also has the feeling of some of those pieces. The Sullivan yeah. what? Say it again. Sullivan Goss. Maybe you can look at it on the computer. I'll if bet you that about it. Sullivan Goss. G O S T. Okay. G O S S. G G O S S. G O S S. Goss. Oh God. It's an art gallery in oh. Santa Barbara. Okay. But they do have a computer. So take a look at the local art that they're selling for Christmas and see what you think. Not all of it, but there were some pieces that were reminiscent of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. mm, nice. Yeah, hey, we're going to take a quick break here because for a public service announcement. 
On Monday afternoon at five o'clock, two of our members will be reading their poetry online. One of them is with us, Mary Frerichs. And the other one who just joined but isn't with us tonight is Cynthia Waring. Oh, nice. I'm going to read Christmas poems. Yeah. Or one. So, Carpentry. So Mary sent me the flyer. So what I'm going to do is I'll send it out to everyone. So you can, you can all take a look at it. And if you would choose to attend, good time. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> it's on Zoom. So I'd love to have you come. Ooh. Now this is oh. Cynthia Waring's and she's not with us tonight. I don't see her here. Can you make it bigger? That's what um, I And Let me see what I can do. Yes. Maybe we should wait in case she shows up and go to someone else. Well, okay, we can come back to it, sure. Because she might show up. And Ooh, this beauty oh, wow. belongs to Janet Black. Me. Very um, cool. This, this was, uh, some of you know, I'm, I'm in a collage group that meets once a month. And the, uh, we give each other themes and challenges. The theme for this one was dreams. And uh, I struggled with the idea for a while until I came across in my studio an old dream catcher. Hmm. And uh, I went online and found out I could make a dream catcher uh -huh. because you can learn anything on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just happened to have uh, an embroidery hoop. So if you see that the wooden hoop that the dream catcher is, mm -hmm. is mounted on is a, a, a bamboo, uh, part of a bamboo embroidery hoop set. So the idea here is that the unhappy dream ideas get stuck in the dream catcher and the happy dream ideas, which are all in color, uh, go through it oh, and they, they come into my world. Okay. I, I like very much the background, the hoop, and I'm not too sure about the big labels of the bad dreams um, but I don't know what else to suggest. I, I like the little dreams and I like the lace work or whatever is underneath. Uh, I don't know how other people feel about all those labels. The skull is certainly scary and it's okay, but it's scary. Yeah. Cool. Janet, not... is the background, is it paper collage or yeah. is it material fabric? <laughs> it's no, it's all paper. Okay. And actually, I, I started out before I put the hoop on it. I started out with it flipped with the with the with the white on top and the black on the bottom. And uh, by accident, as these things happen, I, I turned it around and went, "Oh, I like that much better." Mm -hmm. changed, yeah, uh, it changed the whole feeling of it for me. Yeah, I like that background very much. Did you want people to be able to read what those labels say? Well, if you see it in person, it's about it's about. Uh, 16 by 20 maybe a little yeah oh, i see you can actually read them oh yeah you can read them okay did you make all those labels too oh yeah oh yeah i have a background in graphic design so i've got a good printer and uh and uh one of the i used a different font for the scary dreams that was kind of a you know creepy looking font and then a really clear font for the i for like the it better when it's a close-up so maybe bigger the labels. Mm. Oh, I like it. I like oh, it. I, like I, it. Do I do too. Yeah. I, do too. I, like yeah. I like the way all those bright colors pop, all the labels. They're yeah. really yeah. nicely balanced. Yeah. And I also like the way the background goes from very dark at the top to very light at the bottom and all of the colored, you know, rectangles on the bottom. I think that transition is really nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I like, I, like the, I like the scary, the scary ones have pictures, which is kind of cool. Some yeah. of them do, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's effective, mm -hmm. I think. You yeah. know. Yeah, what kind definitely. of printer do you have? I have a, a Canon, Canon yeah. Prismacolor. Mm, nice. Mm. What do okay, the having, a, having a good printer, it makes a huge difference. I've, I've got a big Epson. They're P800 sure collar. It's a 17 inch wide carriage. And the, the difference is remarkable. I mean, when I'm printing photographs, um, you know, 
I could get award-winning photographs out of that printer, whereas I can't, you know, any of the other like regular house printers ain't gonna happen. What, what printer do you have, Joe? Yeah. I've got an Epson SureColor P800. I don't know if they still sell the P800, but they, I think I think they do a 700 and a 900. But the key is, if you have a 17-inch carriage, you can then put a roll a roll of paper on it and oh, go wow. 17 by as far as big as you want. Which is really cool, and I've actually started to dabble in digital digital painting <laughs> with an art rage program, which is beating the heck out of me because I have to learn it. <laughs> what do the little colored rectangles on the bottom mean? Um, my, I actually had uh, printed the the regular labels and had little bits. You know, when I cut them out, I mounted them on a real uh, lightweight cardboard so they'd have some some uh, substance and then I realized I had all these little colored scraps and uh, it occurred to me that you know symbolically as the dreams come through they kind of I thought of them as seeds that they were they were dropping seeds that would take root it makes you want to read all the cards mm -hmm. it does yeah <laughs> I thought they were dreams you hadn't dreamt yet no, no, it's it's the difference between the dreams I don't want. It's kind of like an Eastern philosophy thing, the idea that life is but a dream. And uh, the, the, the colorless ones are the ones that I, I find disturbing to me. Oh, yeah. And I want to I want to let them go. So the idea of the dream catcher is that they get caught in that web. Well, and they can't I was talking about the unlabeled ones on the bottom. Oh, I see. And what was the question again? I just thought to me they were dreams you hadn't dreamt yet. Ah, mm. they left you the possibility of dreaming yeah. some more. That's a good yeah. point, Polly. Yeah, that's. I like yeah. that. <laughs> and here's Janet's neck. Is this the next one? Wait a minute. Yeah, I just I just sent a detail picture so you could see it. Oh, bit. that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, there's the detail there. They now you can really oh, yeah. see it. I'm only here for a good bit. <laughs> just really like this this is a really nice piece Janet. yeah thank you yes and what is the piece of music uh it's just probably some random thing i collect the oh. most amazing amount of paper you can imagine <laughs> and uh i have a whole box i every now and then i stumble into a thrift store that has a has a big selection of sheet music just laying there <clears throat> so uh, i mostly use it just for patterning Although sometimes I will find something that has uh, lyrics or something that's suitable for the for the uh, yeah. composition, uh, but this was just for patterning. And right above it, you'll see paper from a from a Chinese newspaper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. On to Kate. Ooh, oh, like this. this is called "A Storm Is Coming." Nice. And I wanted to do, I usually do something that's kind of not, um, I wanted to do something that was more dramatic, that was, mm -hmm. that uh, wasn't so, the bottom is actually just sort of brush strokes that I don't usually do, but um, uh, it made it a little bit more foreboding. That watercolor? Yes. I like it. Yeah, it's nice. I like it too. This is a Kate Higgins, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's really nice. Thanks. Mm -hmm. This one is, um, what did I call this? I forget. Uh, um, precarious. Mm. Because if you can see the face looking down, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and there's something, there's this black under belly of the landscape and then and then then it just drops off. So it's sort of precarious. Um, and it's for it, it's like implies something that we need to pay attention to. I mean I, or something that uh, oh, we're not fully seeing. It might be like a fault line. Mm. Look at those little trees. Yes. Are those trees? Yes. Cute. 
If you wanted to take them back, you could. Here's some, you know, you have more, we have more than this space in here. You've got one over here or two. I you've do. Got one okay. over here. And you've okay. got a cat and a dog over here. <laughs> Unintended. <laughs> It's so funny when you said, I have a face. I didn't notice this one at first. I actually saw this one. <laughs> uh, it's lovely wow. handling of watercolor. Very nicely. Yeah. It really is nicely done. Thank you. <laughs> are, these, are these lines done with ink? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Yes, a pen. A pen. OK. Uh -huh. OK. Yeah. Nice sky, too. I love that sky. Yeah, it's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Nice work. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, this mm. is this is what I'm not really that literally like. This it. is happier. Mm. This is called Happy Valley. Mm -hmm. How large are these? What is the size? Uh not large. Um, let's see. 12, 12 by 16, something like that. It has the feeling of being very big. Mm -hmm. Yes. It'd be very effective, really big. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think it's because there's such large areas of color that I Maybe. think it gives it a bigger scale. Yeah. I really like the linear aspects of it. Mm -hmm. Parallel well, or it, almost parallel lines, pairs of lines. I like that a lot. Well, Everything it, that Kate does reminds me of Yellow Submarine, I swear to God. It does a little bit. <laughs> the, artwork, yeah. the artwork that was done for Yellow Submarine just seems to come right to the forefront. Yeah. Well, that's funny. <laughs> well, it is a happy valley. Yeah. Yes, it's intended to be an abstract landscape. Sure. I love the bubbles, the little blue bubbles. Yeah. yeah. Nicely composed, too. Yeah. That's good work. Thank you. Let's see now. Who's this? I can't remember them anymore. I used to be able to remember these. I can't remember them anymore. That's mine. Oh, is that Lorraine's? Yeah. Ah, okay. Make that I'll one make a little it, bigger. I yeah, will. Yeah. It's bigger. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. Nice. Put in the frame there. Very nice. Yeah. Great texture and lines, movement. Lorraine, were you using a catalyst tool on this? What's a catalyst? It's a, it's rubber. kind of like a rubbery block with notches yeah. cut in it. I, yeah, I was using, yeah, I was. I don't know what part. I think just the ones that, you know, where you can sort of scoop out. I was using uh, a catalyst. I don't remember what size. Mm. They're great for texture. Yeah, the texture in this is really, really nice. Yeah. And I like your colors too. Mm-hmm. Colors are beautiful. Mm-hmm. And this like area right through here out. is very mysterious to me. Like, I don't yeah. know what's going on. It grabs my attention. Yeah, I almost think that's a letter form of some kind. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I'm trying to read something in here, you know? Mm -hmm. Well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really nice. Oh, good. You know, when you when you do something like this and you have nobody to show it to, you don't know if somebody's going to like it. So it's good to get the feedback. Mm -hmm. And you've yeah. got a nice range of tone, too. You've got very light tones and you've got some very dark tones. So you've got a pretty good value range, too. Mm -hmm. And they're layered on top of each other. You yes. know, that's I, would, I like that a lot, where yeah. the light's on the dark. Absolutely. Or actually the blue is dark on light. Mm -hmm. How did you choose your colors? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm sort of attracted to turquoise and uh, the brownish gold fits with it. And then that right lower corner was too dark. So then I added that light mm -hmm. color to balance it out. Yeah. Is this acrylic? Works. Yes. Lorraine, how's, what size is this? Uh, it's about a 24. It's actually the biggest piece I've ever made. Mm. Um, so it was, it's, it was kind of fun to work on it because you could sort of spread out. Mm. Yeah. I enjoy working large too. 
Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not, I'm right now I'm staying with small just because I'm working on some stuff and doing some studies, but I'd much prefer working large. That is nice. Thank you. Glad you like it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know who this belongs to. That's a fun one. <laughs> Ringling Brothers. This is mine. <laughs> I like it. Fun. He passes up. <laughs> like you had a good time doing it really i did i did I this like came out of this just came out of our abstract class i like the um, reflection under the what looks almost like a rock the ringling brothers i like the dots and water under that mm -hmm. i love but it i'm so trying I'm, I've been working behind. a lot with with layering trying to layer my paints more and more mm -hmm. And the title of this is When the Circus Goes to Jail. <laughs> I like it a lot. We're going to have right. to pair up. I have something in my mind called Not My Circus, Not My Monkeys. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, is that one of your paintings behind you? Uh, I wish. But you know what, what that is? Still? Now that you brought it up, it's time what for another it? public no. service announcement. Oh, could be a book cover. Journey. Oh, it looks like Clifford Still. Exactly. That is a piece by Clifford Still. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, I, that I have in my personal collection, along with my Lee Krasner's and my Gerhard oh, Richter's. Behind you is Clifford <laughs> Come on. But this is, this is going to be the next artist we discuss in another two weeks. Oh. Clifford Still. Lee Krasner? Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. No, we no, did Clifford Lee Krasner. Still. This is going to be oh, Clifford Still. Yeah, did you have did. it recorded? Did you, did you make a copy? I did. You know what? I haven't I haven't been able to put it up yet, but it's going to go up this week, and I'll send good. everybody the link so you can you can see that. That was a really good that was a really good um, discussion. Oh, but the next I, one's going to be Clifford Still. I want to know who is married to that guy. You know, <laughs> which guy? Is it Clifford Still? No, Pollock. Oh, Pollock was married to Krasner. Yeah, right. Not a very nice man. Mm-hmm. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled program. Okay. So Joe, lots of great texture on, well, going back to that one, yeah. lots of great texture, lots of great color, very, uh, it keeps your eye moving all around it. Um, there's kind of an organic feel to it. I'm not sure why, but it does kind of look like, well, I don't know, it does kind of have a little bit of a landscape feel for some reason, and yet it's all just you know, strokes and, and run, you know, runs and everything, but um, um, it works, it works, it's great. I love Thanks. the colors. It just keeps my eye moving all around and I like, I like it a lot. Also has a sense of depth, not just. Yes, it does. Yeah. You know, it's funny because what, what I think really inspired me in this piece was some, um, some of the work that Mark Bradford's done. He's done a lot of um, collage work, collage and paint work, where he uses, um, he's actually gone out and taken down um, like advertisements that are slapped on walls. And he puts, he uses those as part of his collage. Mm. And this to me was, became, as I worked through the, the background, it became more and more like a wall to me. Uh -huh. With just a lot of you know, old paint on it and stuff. and. I figured, okay, if that's the case, then let's slap on post no bills. I printed that out. And I said, well, now that you've gone this far, <laughs> let's bring the circus to town. <laughs> cool. Pretty nice. Thanks. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice piece. All right. Okay. So uh, my, that's mine. <laughs> who's that? It's San, it's Sandy. Sandy's. Yep. Candy. And um, this is one of those pictures where um, I don't know if I should it stay or should it just go. Um, I I like it, but when I've showed it to people in the past, they say they I get like dead silence. <laughs> so oh, I think um, I it's colors. wild, Sammy. It's not your usual way of doing things. No, no, mm -hmm. I see a bride and groom in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do see possible people and. Through to their skeleton a little bit. Too. 
I see a landscape from the top down, looking from the sky down. Mm -hmm. and, and I really like the, the, the flat black framework on top of that oh, you know, yeah. striped paint underneath. Mm -hmm. I think that works really well. I think, it, that's, a nice I think it was black gesso. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What size is it? It was a while here? ago, so it's hard. And I scrape, it's all done by scraping. Mm -hmm. um, Mm. Is that acrylic? What's, yes. Uh huh. Sandy, what size is this? I think it's a sixteen by twenty. Mm, okay. You said you used black gesso. Yeah. The was background. That on, was that put on first? Yes. Oh wow! The bright colors really covered it. Yeah, yeah they look color. great on the on that. The, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised the black went on first. I would have thought. From yeah, I thought at this the other way around. Yeah. yeah, I painted I and instead of using a white gesso to to um just cover the canvas, uh, I used I thought I'll use black, and that's why it's matte looking. Uh, I think it's a great choice because I I like to work mm -hmm. on black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's funny because it gives me the illusion that the black is oh. forward. They can't which, hear me. Which, yeah. made, which made me think you put that on afterwards. Hmm. And when I see the lines like cutting through, like you know, I think through, right, I think right actually here. I I did some of it afterwards. Like oh, okay, between. all right, yeah, mm -hmm. I did. In it really does work though. I really like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so do I. So I Thank see you. more than a bride and groom. I unless that person's hunched. I see a third head. A severed head? <laughs> and, and it just, the third head is a spooky one. Um, right on the top. No, it's probably just, the, the thing's old. And they probably, probably put it in the Somebody needs to mute. Yeah. Right. He needs to mute. Yeah. Talking. Wow. Oh, this was supposed to be a feeling. So this is the, this is my happy feeling. I just did this. And it's, it's, um, I painted over five times before I got what I wanted. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's multiple layers of paint. What did this you do really for nice. texture that looks like kind of like arrows and turquoise? Mm -hmm. What did you use for texture there? Um, I just, uh, well, the whole thing, the whole thing is pretty textured, but um, I used uh, like a credit card. Um, and that's where I scraped, I, I put a blob of the turquoise on and scraped it with the credit card. So it oh. formed those lines. Sonny, how, how did you get the textures like in here and up in here underneath the, you know, like the, well, like the pink and white? And I scraped off, a, a, I, I had a whole picture up there and I, I just didn't like it. So I mm -hmm. basically took paper towels and scraped it all off and it left, it left, um, the underneath part uh, and and then I um, continued using the paper towels and I just dabbed it around the the whole um, the whole picture so it, it's mm -hmm. all it all looks quite um, textured it is happy I think you've succeeded in yeah you did that sure making a happy piece and it's quite abstract yeah. You, I don't pick out things in there. To me, it looks very abstract. Yeah. Unless the tiny little figure in the middle of in black, that could be something real. Oh, yeah. It's not meant to be anything. Mm -hmm. I, I think to me, it's excitement. You know, that's the feeling I would get oh, from it. Yeah. That would be a nice title, excitement. Yeah. <laughs> I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. That is. I could see that frame behind a nice uh, off-white couch. Mm. Oh yeah, it's a small painting. It's only twelve by twelve. Uh huh. Oh. It's much bigger. Yeah. yeah. You does. could make it in a bigger version. Yeah, I don't. Like it. The way I paint, it's like I can never. I don't know what my style is because <laughs> I just paint I and kind of I can't duplicate it. You know, uh -huh. you've done a lot of very beautiful work. You're really talented. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, I like your stuff. It looks good. Thank you. 
And this is Sandy's. And that is 2020. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> Yeah, that, could, that could be seen a number of ways. It could be, you know, kind of like a dead tree in the desert for one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with a dying bird diving down. <laughs> you know, like a like, of a photograph, but it's so pretty. It's, it's very. This, this looks like a swamp down here. It no, looks very. Right. This is like the, the yeah, earth before it's come to life. <laughs> or <laughs> ever it dies. I don't know. Kind of I somber. see the uh, I see the apocalypse. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a flood. You know, it's, flood. it's funny. You now this is the first painting I've seen tonight that's that represents 2020, and mm. um, I started one, and I stopped because I remembered an old Twilight Zone episode, or it may have been Night Shift, <laughs> yeah. where a painter did a painting and finished it, and it brought it to life. <laughs> Because the painting that I was working on and I was doing some image transfer work was for pestilence. Uh -huh. And I got it to a certain point and I said, no, I'm not doing the rest of this. No, no. <laughs> nope, not me. taking any chances. I'm not, I am not bringing this into the world. <laughs> Who so, did this? Huh? Who did this? I did. Oh, no, this, this one's not yours. Oh, no. Who did this painting? No, that's Sandy's. It, is the sun going down or the moon rising? Well, uh, to me, there's some something flying in there. I don't know whether it's a bug or a bird. Uh, Sorry, I got a phone call from the doctor. Church. And uh, there's some sort of a bird on the ground. It's yeah. quite active and it's quite beautiful. I don't know what else to yeah. say about it. I mean, I well, think it's fine the way it is. It's an really see chaos. I think yeah, it's very dramatic. A really mm -hmm. strong Thank horizontal you. movement that could be flood, it could be wind. And everything flying through the air. Yeah. And they all look sharp. Very windy. And the light of the sun setting or rising is so nicely done. Thank you. I'd send that into a magazine. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one of the nicest monochromatics I've seen in a long time. Yeah, it's very pretty. Yeah, it's yeah. Pretty, very much. Yeah, I like I, that I, one. I know you said it represents 2020, but I think it's too beautiful for that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's just kind of somber. That's yeah, it, is, it does have a somber feel to it to a, to a degree. But... There may be 2020 contests and you could send it to them. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Well, if you hear of one, let me know. That's great. Yeah. Really nice. Thank you. Cassie Tondro. Aha. Uh -huh. Look at that. So this is um, a continuation of the series I've been working on where I'm using leftover house paint on unprimed raw canvas. Raw canvas. This this is pretty big. It's 36 by 48. Mm. And the title is Rhapsody in Blue. Mm. <laughs> nice. Good I love that. That's just cool. I would never know that was on a, a canvas. But it's very it, the colors are beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Cassie, I meant to ask you, where do you where do you get your unprimed canvas from? Um, I buy it by the roll from Chicago Canvas. Oh okay. Supply, Chicago Canvas Supply. Mm -hmm. They so have it in all different weights. What's the difference from your experience between this and um, the other kind? What you mean primed canvas? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, when it's unprimed, the paint, this is thinned out house paint. It sinks into the canvas. So it's it's not sitting on top of it. It actually like becomes part of the canvas. Mm -hmm. uh, how much control do you have of what results you get? Or are you always somewhat surprised? Yeah, no, I have, I, you know, I have a little bit of control. I don't have a lot of control, but that's what makes it interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm working on really large pieces. They're like, I don't know, like five feet by six feet. Ooh. And then I, you know, when, when I've gotten it to a certain point, then I look at it and I decide how I want to crop it. You know, so I might... You cut them afterwards. Well, I'm sorry, what? After they're dry, you cut them? Yes. 
Oh, how are yeah, you? Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's not stretched. It's behind okay. you, right? Yes, it is. It is behind me. <laughs> yeah, I mm -hmm. thought it looked familiar. <laughs> So it's not stretched. How do you mount it then? Or I, it I, when, after it's um, dry and I decide how I'm going to crop it, then I stretch it. Ah, nice. Well, Very Cassie, nice. how? What is your method? Is it is it poured, dripped? Yes, it's poured. I I take the canvas, I scrunch it up, and I cram it into a bucket, and I pour the paint on top of it, and then I pull it out. <laughs> oh, okay. let it dry, let it dry. And I do that in layers. Wow. Mm -hmm. Your work is so oh. original that you might interest some sort of a museum or something because uh, they love large pieces. Yeah, and this yeah. work needs to get out for sure. Yeah. Although, although Cassie does have a pretty good set of collectors lately. I actually, mm -hmm. after looking at it a long time, see a few people in there. You're always looking for something relational. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you see these in person, there are that you do start like I always start to see insects and plants and yes. little, little figures. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they have do you seal this afterwards? Well, you know, I've been playing around with that, Joe. Mm -hmm. I I've tried different things. Like I tried an isolation coat. Mm -hmm. and then a polymer varnish and that really it gives it a very plasticky look mm -hmm. and it but more than that it really um these are very crisp lines and it really distorts oh. the oh, image wow. and and dull, dulls the colors down mm -hmm. so that that didn't work so what i've been doing now is using a spray varnish Mm -hmm. just on top of the rock. I actually, I talked to Golden about this, you know, Golden mm -hmm. Paints, asking sure. them, what do you think? You know, what should I do? And yeah. and um, so I've just been doing two coats of a spray varnish. And that gives it, because like these white areas are, th those have no paint on them. You know, mm -hmm. they're completely unprotected. And that- the Canvas is white to start with. Well, it's, uh, it's off-white, you know, it's a it's natural canvas color. Yeah. But that gives it um, at least a little more protection, you know, from dust, dirt, or whatever. Yeah. But the the guy at Golden, he said, you know, he said you're in you're in good company, you know, using house paint for your art. A lot of people do it, mm -hmm. and he said, if I were you, I would just leave it as is, you mm -hmm. know, because mm -hmm. if you get it too sealed, like I said, it destroys the effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you're, you know, because you're using house paint too, you you generally don't get what I would call really vibrant colors. So that you know you're dealing with you're already dealing with something that's a little flat anyway. They're and very you, flat. And if you put a if you put a, another coat on top of that, I can see where that could really really affect it. Yeah. This, this looks great the way it is, but it's it's bordering on becoming too flat. Yeah. Do you have? like three or four different colors here? There's actually only three. Three. Mm -hmm. So you used red and blue and? Two blue. Turquoise. Turquoise. turquoise, yeah. But where they overlap, you know, that's how I got, like those grays kind of in yeah. there. Yeah, that's this where they very, overlap. This is very reminiscent of the Japanese shibori uh, dyeing techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for crump, they crumple up fabric and wrap it into little packets and things and then pour different colors of dyes on them and some of them yeah. can be very controlled and elaborate yeah well i do have a background in fiber arts there you oh. go so that's why a lot of my paintings often look like fiber art mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you have your work anywhere showing anywhere not now no i'm thinking about approaching some galleries in la i don't know i've I've not had particularly good experiences with galleries in the past, so. Yeah. And you know, if, if, here's another per, you know, PSA. For more detail on Cassie's process, if you go to the Buenaventura Abstract Artist Collective web, uh, Facebook page, I posted a link to Cassie's process. Oh. Could you say that? It out. 
Could you say that slowly? Put the link. What? It's it's the it's the Facebook page, and I think Lorraine, you're on it. It's the it's the Buena Ventura Abstract Artist Collective Facebook page. Okay. And I usually post some other stuff on there, but uh, in particular, Cassie had had, had come out with um, a, a description of her process, and okay. I, I posted a link to it up there, and I think it's, it's pretty <laughs> terrific. Pretty yeah. Decent. I'm wondering if you interested a furniture store, they could sell it with the furniture. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there, you know, I've been in furniture stores. It's kind of like showing in restaurants. Yeah. People, people don't really go to furniture stores to buy art. You know, well, they do at certain types. There's one in Santa Barbara. Yeah, Michael Kate. Yeah, Michael Kate. Uh, certain, and there's one other one. Certain furniture stores do sell art, do show art, and you know, I think your work might go well. I wonder if Jen is still in charge of Michael's. I think well, the LA when, gallery thing is probably your best bet. Yeah, when I've approached Michael Kate in the past, they've said they're looking for a certain color palette. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've already approached them. Okay. Not, I, not no, with this no. body of work, but they want you to work within um like an interior design you know color palette and mm -hmm. it's not really my thing so do you think your color palette now is not one they would like well uh, yeah I, see. I think they're looking for like the painting behind joe you know they're looking for like rusts and reds and okay. earthy okay okay they'll make well, it have this quick still for about five know. million <laughs> it's selling is a hard uh, in my I, I don't know how to do it yeah and mm -hmm. I'm still pursuing the whole FASO web page idea we did, we're doing it for um, the BAA uh, which will be coming up the early part of next year but I'm also pursuing it for our artist group um, because that is, an, it is a way to get get your paintings out in front of some collectors anyway. Now, how are you um, going to drive traffic though? Well, they, they actually do it. I've been Social getting media. emails <laughs> where oh. they, they, they pick certain artists and they, they broadcast it out. And they do, they do a lot of marketing of individual artists in groups. So I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm taking it slow, but it's something that might happen next year. Mm -hmm. To me, if you, you know, and the other thing is that the beauty of that is you know, you're actually just putting out an image. So it's, it's like advertising something where you don't have to take the actual object and put it somewhere, you know, I, it's, 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 just, it's out there. And if someone likes it, they can contact you and, yes. you know, make the sale. It's just another, another Avenue. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it's the best Avenue, but it's, it's an Avenue. There, there is art being sold online. There's no question. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I saw quite a bit of work through, artfulhome.com hmm. they, they do in fact I just sold one yesterday they mostly not the big this is big you know 36 by 40 so mostly hmm. not the bigger pieces but like the 24 by 30 30 by 40 mm -hmm. I saw quite a bit of work through them interesting yeah hmm. we'll go to the go to the next one we, I, this one doesn't look the least bit oh it didn't look the least bit flat to me it looked like layer on layer on layer of woods oh no so i guess i don't know what flat means chris what well, i'm not talking about the depth i think that i think you're right the depth is there it's it's the paint color itself tends to be flat the finish huh yeah it's, it's, a, it's just a function of the house paint though i mean that's you know, okay. and you certainly don't want to put a gloss on top of this. That would look ridiculous. So, I mean, it, it has a really nice feeling, but if you tried to put anything more, like Cassie was saying, you put an isolation coat on and then you put varnish on top of that and you're, you're actually, you're going to, it'll turn into maybe something like looking like an encaustic. It will, you'll just really lose some detail and, and flatten the paint. Sure. Yeah, that's that's a good analogy. Encaustic, it lose it loses the detail. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if, if you like an encaustic look, that's fine. But I don't think that's what you're shooting yeah. for. Yeah. I didn't know what you meant by flat. It didn't look flat at all. Okay. No, no, you're right. It, it, 
my mistake. It's it's not it's not the depth of the painting because the depth is obviously there because you've you've got a great value range going on. So the depth is there. It's just the flatness of the color of the paint, and that's the just colors, an inherent property of the paint. Yeah, the colors in the last one seemed better than the colors in this one. I don't know whether I think the well. Yeah. I like but, those colors better. Well, the, the, the first one's brighter for sure. And I'm yeah. not, this looks maybe a little bit lighter, at least on my computer, who knows, but a little bit lighter than it actually is. The, it has, this one has a lot of depth in the color. And this is um, 36 by 36 called Web of Life. Hmm. I find that the one the color Christ. on the yeah. left with the kind of um, orangish with more space works a little better for me than the real dark areas lower down. <coughs> the first one yeah, I guess, the first guys I mean, and the second one autumn. With this process, you kind of get what you get. So I mean, it, it's not much you can do with it from that perspective, but. but she could put less real dark paint. She well, you that. could. You I mean, I, I think I'd like to see color. more middle middle value tones, but that's just it's just the way the paint's going to come out. I don't think you can change that much. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, think you can you see can it as well as a photo, probably as you can standing in front of it. I think right. that would be a really big difference. I love the blending where the colors have blended yeah. too. That creates another. Um, I guess that creates the mid tones. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just noticing down through here. And I think that's what I'm not seeing on my screen, but with down in through here, you're seeing some of that mixing happen. Mm -hmm. These areas right through here. Yeah. Just noticing it now. They do They do look better in person for sure. I mean, everything yeah, does. I would think so. I think everybody's work looks better. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Go, to, go to the next one, Joe. I like it because it's got a lot of depth. So this one is uh, 30 by 36, Dawn of a New Day. Mm -hmm. yeah, it looks a little washed out to me. I'm not sure why my, I noticed that last time too, Joe. I'm not sure why my photos are kind of washing out. I don't know. Because I, I just take them right from what you send me and I just. Yeah. How this up might there. look upside down. All right, we can do that. You haven't, we haven't done this tonight, so we need to do this <laughs> at least once. Oh, I like it. Wait, go back to what you had just a second ago. Sideways. I can't, oh. oh, I like that horizontal kind of. I Wait a minute, too. is this the one you're talking about? Yeah, I kind of like that. But you can go to the opposite side too, see how that looks, try all different, that's nice. That's upside too. down. Yeah, I like upside down, I think a little better than right side up. Ooh. <laughs> Well, I do have people who buy my work and they hang it you near, know, not in the orientation I intended. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, I think this piece, I, I prefer this piece to the purple one. Mm -hmm. it has a little more life to it. And I think maybe I like the blue one the best, but this makes me feel like I'm in the woods, in the forest somewhere. Mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. it's fall and some of the leaves have changed color. Uh, somewhat inviting. You know, it's funny. I think there's, you know, what no matter the, the the perspective, there seems to be a lot more line in in this versus that. Mm. This has got more shape, whereas yeah. this has more line work. I don't know. Well, you know, each one's different. Yeah. I mean, I love them all, really. They're beautiful. Oh, well, thank yeah. you. They are. Well, I, I think I, I think I like this. I think I, I think I like this one the, the best. I like having this light coming in from up here. Mm-hmm. But like you say, someone will buy it and they'll put it up the way they want. It. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of abstract painting. Is this the last before you sign it, huh? This is the last piece. For everybody, because yep. I have class. Yep. So I'm going to say goodbye and leave. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Mary. Bye. And Sandy's leaving too. So, what's the challenge is going to be for next month? 
What do we want to do? Are we are we going to get together in December? Um, it'll be January. You know what? Maybe the second week in January because I don't think I, I don't think we want to do the first week. The first week, which is January sixth, people will. Why not? Know, Nobody's going anywhere these days. Well, that's true. <laughs> I think that's the Georgia election. It's the fifth. Okay. Yeah. So we all know the results. We can. So, uh, so we'll all be drunk on the sixth when they win. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, I'm good with the sixth. We can still go there. Sure. So when are you doing Clifford Still? Um, that will be two weeks from today on the 16th. Oh. Okay, good. And I'll, there'll be an email coming out on that. Mm -hmm. And I looked, I actually was, was toying with the idea of not doing one this month, but that's far away, far enough away from Christmas where I think it'll work. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks, Joe. Well, wait yeah, a minute, thanks, wait Joe. a minute. We can't well, leave until we decide what the challenge is going to be for next no. month. Hmm. We always have the open there's always going to be an open category. Whatever you're working on, bring it in and we'll talk about it. And, you know, that's always there. Um, I don't even know what you mean by the challenge, so. Oh, it's like, it's a theme. In other words, we sometimes we've, we've picked a color or like this month we picked an emotion. You're doing them well, since it's the end of the year, should it be 2020 or Again? 2021? 2021. Yeah, we could do that. We could do 2021. Sure. I, I'd like to see some hopeful paintings. So. I <laughs> <laughs> um, 2021. Well, there's monochrome. There's complementary colors there's shapes there's how about doing something with white with white mm. it's hard to photograph how about something with um... that's what makes it tough as a challenge janet is because you're going to have to you're going to have to put something around it to bring it out this isn't the polar bear in the snowstorm painting is it <laughs> <laughs> I know. I I could put a big just to come up with a big empty white page. <laughs> Christine, oh she's gone. Okay, that's right. She's gonna take off. Um, I don't know. Do you want to do a color? It doesn't have to be white. It could be another color. Well, white would be like winter and snow. Mm -hmm. Why don't we do white and something? White and one other color? Yeah. How about black and white? Well, it'd have to have another color. We did that. Oh, we did black and white. You're right. Yes. Um, yes. Or just pick a color. How about red? Yeah, red and white. How about just red? Just red? Shades we'll do a of monochromatic. red. We'll do a, okay, we'll do a monochromatic red, and I'll, I'm going to do white because okay. I just like it. <laughs> Herding cats. That'll work. So now let me write this down so I don't forget it because I will. Um, we're going to do red monochromatic. And 2021. And then we have the open category. Okay. okay. And I'll be posting the, uh, I'll be posting the um, video. Did I do, I didn't do the last getting to know, but did I do the last, I think I did the last artist meeting. I'll check anyway, I'll, I'm gonna update it and I'll send everybody out a notice. And I'll also send around that, um, the poetry reading that Mary and um, Cynthia are doing. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm gonna give you 24 minutes back of your day. <laughs> You've got the <laughs> usual time. We're getting good at this, I think that's the problem. Yeah. It's not a problem. I like that. No, it's actually not a problem. We all we all spend too much time on Zoom anyway. God knows. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. Well, I enjoyed seeing all the art very much. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a great yes, time. I, I really enjoy it. My, my favorite night of the month. Sec well, yeah. maybe the second favorite. Depends. I don't know. The other <laughs> night's pretty good, too. <laughs>
Thanks a lot, everybody. Okay, ciao. We'll see you next Bye. month. Have a nice holiday. You too. Bye-bye. No,